Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and you don't know how happy I am to be with you today because this marks my 100,000 subscribers video. Yay! Actually, I'm a little bit far behind though and I'm actually up to 108,000 subscribers and I'm very, very happy about that. But basically, I just want to make this a very chatty, informal video and be honest with you and tell you what it's like to be on YouTube. But first, I want to thank each and every one of you who subscribed to my channel over the last three years. I started this channel about three years ago. I was one of you sitting out there, you know, watching these YouTubers, trying things on my skin, loving it and thinking, gosh, I would really like to do this from my own kitchen. And it is so weird that now in the year 2020, if you want to have your own TV station from a spare bedroom, you can do that. And it is not even that expensive. I think my whole setup here was maybe six, $700 for the camera and the lights. And I had to have the spare bedroom because my husband would have killed me if I kept doing this at my kitchen table and in the family room as I started out three years ago. And because I always have to do this, if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging and making your second half your best half, then I hope you'll click that little bell to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and or share it with a friend. Okay, earlier I sent out a little message to you all. It wasn't really a video, but I asked you to give me some questions that you would like me to answer. And not a lot of people replied because I think I'm pretty naked on my channel about what I'm about and my struggles with things because I've always kind of thought that I really want to help women out there. And the best way to me that I could help them is to let them know that I have struggled, especially in the first half. I did a lot of things wrong. And over the years, I think I've learned to improve that ratio and I'm doing more things right. And that was through a lot of hard won battles that I learned to kind of change how I was doing things. And I really like it when I can share those challenges that I had with you in the hopes that maybe I can help some of you younger ones, especially avoid the things that I went through. Okay, first, before I get into the questions and answers, and there weren't a lot of them, but I do have some things on my mind that I would really like to speak with you about, and they do pertain to some of those questions. First, I just want to thank each and every one of you. I just feel so blessed to have my own YouTube channel, 50 Plus Beauty, and over the years, I have come to think of you all as the 50 Plus Beauty family. And especially during the COVID situation, I have felt that more intensely than ever because I've been a little isolated. No, I've been a lot isolated and I know a lot of you have too. And one thing that I think we do have here that we can do as YouTubers is that we can kind of create little families of women, in my case it's women, and that we can support each other and kind of be online friends with each other. No, let's not say online friends. Let's just say friends with each other because I feel like you are my friends and I count you as my friends and that just makes me feel good in my heart to realize that you are my friends. And over the years, there are many of you who we've corresponded back and forth in the comment section and I've learned little bits about your life and your challenges and struggles. And it just warms my heart when I see some of you comment because I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't see her. I haven't seen her for the last week and there she is. It's a wonderful feeling. And I really didn't know that it would feel any different at all to have 100,000 subscribers because I have been on YouTube for three years now and there were times when my channel really grew rapidly, especially at the first, which I think actually angered some established YouTubers here. And then times where the channel kind of calmed down and, and the growth was kind of even. And lately the channel has started growing again, which I'm really happy about. Okay, those are my thanks to you. And there is no way I can possibly tell you what is in my heart and how grateful I really am to each and every one of you. Okay, let's get into the questions. And the first question is, tell us a little bit about your real life. Okay, and for those of you who really watch my channel regularly, I am sure you know this. I have been married to Alan, my husband, for, it's either 36 or 37 years, I forget. It's September 3rd, so it is coming up. I think it's going to be 37 years. Maybe, no, it's going to be 38 years. And I met Alan years ago when I was about 24 years old. He worked at the local TV station and I was the hostess rainbow lady for a kid's show called One of a Kind. And, and one idea that I learned way back when, when I hosted the One of a Kind children's TV show is that each of us are one of a kind and special. We each have value and worth. And I've really just kept that in my heart 
Each of us is one of a kind and special. But anyway, I met him on that show. He was the audio man on that show. And he used to make a little bra mic that he would put down into the top of my top. And so we got to know each other that way. We ended up going to a cast party there and he had long hair. And I always thought before this party, oh, he's just a hippie freak. You know, we have nothing in common. But at this party, I realized that his dad was a pastor and he was really this wonderfully kind young man. And at that party, he leaned over and he kissed me in the middle of a conversation. And I had never had anybody do that. And I don't know, he kind of piqued my interest. And I started thinking of Alan as more than just kind of a hippie freak. My sister always said he looked like a European tennis player. So she had a better opinion of his long hair than I did. So anyway, we dated only about four months and I realized that I wanted him in my life because he tends to balance me. I am very highly emotional and reactive and my moods go up and down and he is very, very stable and just a very, very, very good man. And I had had a brief marriage to my high school sweetheart when I was in my early 20s and it just wasn't good chemistry there. I, well, I won't go into that. I don't want to put him down or anything like that, but suffice it to say, Alan is my one and only and it has been great to be with him for 37 years or 38 or whatever it is. And we have two sons, Dylan, who is 37 years old, and he's marrying Melanie in less than a month. I'm so excited about that. And then Colin, who is 31 years old, and he has been married to Emily for six or seven years. And he lives in Grand Rapids, so we talk a lot on the phone. But Dylan and Melanie live right here in town, which is wonderful. Sure. Now, in terms of what I do outside of YouTube, I am still working, although in the next year or two, I, I do plan to retire or at least cut back significantly. My sister and I have a business together and basically it's an insurance type business. It's a little hard to explain, but we have a national network of chiropractors that we build and credential for insurance companies and payers pretty much across the nation. And our largest client is a company called TriWest Healthcare and they serve the US military and they use our chiropractors in the network. So in about half of the country, our chiropractors are used to serve the veterans. And we're very, very proud of that. And then also in our company, we do flexible spending account administration, which is an insurance related benefit for employers. And so I do sales at the company and I do enrollment meetings and things like that. Okay, now that my background is out of the way, let's go to another question. Have you had your eyes done and what work have you had done? And no, thank you for asking, by the way, instead of just saying, you've had your eyes done, you've had a facelift, you've had this, you've had this. I really am absolutely, totally transparent about the work that I've had done, but I do like people to ask instead of just kind of accuse. And that was very nicely put. But no, I have not had my eyes done. And I'm going to show you my eyelids right now because you would see a little scar had I had my eyelids done. And I'll actually show you a picture of my bare eyelids here. And as you can see, I've had no scars on my eyelids and nothing done on the bottom. And I don't know if you would see anything on the bottom, but I've had nothing done on the bottom. But I have had quite a bit done and I am 63 years old, 62, no, I'm 62 years old. And I have had a few little tweaks and I'll tell you exactly what I've had. I do have Botox all across my forehead and I've had that since I was like 42 years old. So this is 20 years of Botox talking. And then I also have it in these wrinkly areas underneath my eyes in the crow's feet areas, but you can still see my crow's feet because I really don't want to have totally no wrinkles there. And actually at 62, I don't know that they could make it to where I had no wrinkles there. So that is my Botox use. And I have had some filler, although it's not the kind that you think. And I've explained this to a lot of people in the comment section when they've asked if I have had fillers in my cheeks. And quite honestly, I do not like my cheeks. And some of you are very nice and you say you like them. But the reason I don't like them is that I had a fat filler, a fat injection in my cheeks, maybe about seven or eight years ago. And I posted a video about a procedure I had done on my breasts. I was having rheumatoid arthritis. And so I had a couple of pairs of silicone breast implants removed and I had those implants replaced with fat. And ever since I had the breast fat transfer, I haven't had any arthritis pain anywhere in my body. And I had been diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, which is a spinal rheumatoid arthritis. And now I have no pain from that at all. And I really credit having had that breast fat transfer and having the silicone implants removed. But when he was doing that, I asked if he could put some fat in these nasal folds here. And I thought I didn't really want chemicals there, but a little fat would be helpful. So I was put under to have the breast fat transfer done. And when I woke up, not only had he put fat in my nasal folds, but he had also put fat in my cheeks. 
and they looked terrible. I walked around looking like a chubby-cheeked chipmunk, that's hard to say, for maybe about three or four years. Now it's gotten much more manageable, but I still really don't like it all that well. So anyway, I did have the fat transfer to my cheeks and to my nasal folds, and then recently, within the past year, I finally gave up on trying to make my very thin lips more plump by derma rollers and all kinds of other things, and I went and I got Restylane lip injections, and I really think I need another dose of that right now, but I'm waiting a little while and I'm going to have that done. I really do like having my lips done. It's been wonderful. Now, in terms of surgical procedures, maybe about five years ago, I had lipo to my chin because I was getting a little bit of a double chin, and I really wouldn't do that lipo again because now they have Kybella, which is, I think, an injection, and they also do cool sculpting, and if I had to do it all over again, I would have done one of those and not the lipo, but I did have that done. And I also had a series of BBL treatments to kind of tighten my skin, and I think it really did that. It was designed to tighten your skin and also to get rid of brown spots. And I had maybe three of those done every six months for maybe three or maybe four times. And then all of a sudden I realized that that intense pulse light was actually giving me melasma all along my forehead. And that's why I have been fighting it with the Obagi system lately. And I'll put a link to my Obagi treatment video down below so you can see that process because it has really, really helped get rid of that melasma and I am so happy. Now, the next question I thought was kind of an interesting, kind of insightful question. She says, what is the thing that surprised you most about YouTube? Okay, there were several things that surprised me. The first was that when I sat out where you are, I saw these YouTubers and they look so friendly with each other and I'm sure many of them are. And so I so looked forward, not just to getting my channel started, but also to getting to be friends with all these mature beauty YouTubers. Well, imagine my shock when I was on maybe a couple of months and my channel started really growing fast and then one of them did a video against me and they were all like talking about me behind my back and they called me a snake and all these terrible things. It just was not what I had expected. I think they thought my channel was growing too fast because they said nobody's channel grows that fast. Well, since I have been here three years ago, several other channels have started up after me and they are growing like gangbusters well ahead of me. So anyway, that surprised me that I was not welcomed with open arms. And quite honestly, it hurt my feelings because they all seemed so nice. And then I got here and it was kind of like a new girl had arrived at high school and everyone decided to hate her. So that just wasn't very fun. And the second thing that surprised me about that whole circumstance is that, and I am mad at myself for this, I let the activities of those kind of mean girls change the way I was playing my game. And looking back, I'm really mad at myself because even though I said at the time it really didn't hurt my feelings, well, it did hurt my feelings. And I let it change me because all of a sudden I started thinking maybe I don't need to get more subscribers. Maybe I don't need to get more views. Maybe I just need to be quiet and do my own thing and be kind of alone out here, which is what I was, was kind of alone out here. But when I had first come to YouTube, I had all these big dreams and lately I'm feeling those dreams again. And I'll tell you in a minute what form those dreams are now taking but it surprised me that I let their actions and their attitudes make me feel less than. And I'm usually not like that, and I really don't ever want to be that way again. And certainly in my second half, that is a lesson I learned. It doesn't matter what people say or do. You've got to stay your own course and stay true to your own heart. Now, another thing that surprised me about YouTube, and this really did surprise me, is that none of this makes any difference with how you feel. And I know that seems odd, but I guess I always looked at like a Jennifer Aniston or someone like that, and I thought they just must be so happy. They must feel like they're walking around on a cloud all the time because everyone loves them, and they just must feel wonderful about that. Well, it's odd, and I'm certainly no Jennifer Aniston, but I had a little bit of success on YouTube, and I was really surprised because it really didn't make a difference. I mean, as much as I love all of you and I love my channel and I enjoy the creative aspect of what I'm doing, it wasn't like it totally filled my heart. And I just know that sounds kind of odd, but I guess that plays into what we all do in America, and maybe this is the human condition, that we always think, no matter where we are, if we just get a little further, like if we just get that special car or that great jewelry or that great wardrobe or we lose that weight or we get a YouTube channel or we get a movie or we get an Oscar, that all of a sudden we're gonna feel like everything is wonderful and I'm totally complete. Well, what I realized from this experience, and it is a really good realization, is that 
None of that makes any difference. None of that makes any difference. Happiness is and always has been an inside job. And quite honestly, that is something that I still struggle with. And I have to kind of play games in my own mind to keep my mood happy. Now, I've mentioned this before on my channel and you didn't ask me about this, but I'm going to tell you. I quit drinking 20 years ago. I was 42 years old when I quit drinking and I'm 62 now, so I haven't had any wine or any margaritas. Those are my two favorites. I haven't had anything to drink in 20 years and I'm so grateful for that. And the funny thing about when I drank is that most people around me didn't really know I had a problem because I hit it very well. But every single night I'd have a glass or two or three of wine and I'd have a couple of glasses of something to drink before I would go to a party. And I can remember the last couple of parties I went to with my husband, I started to say kind of inappropriate things under the influence of alcohol. And I realized that I needed to quit. And it was before Christmas and the New Year's. And on both of those events, I promised myself first that I would quit drinking on Christmas Day. And I didn't. I had my wine on Christmas Day. And then I promised myself that New Year's I would quit drinking. And that if I didn't quit drinking, I would go to an AA meeting. And I did on about the 6th of January, 20 years ago. I don't remember the exact year, but I went to that AA meeting and I said, oh my gosh, there are other people out there who have the same problem with alcohol that I do. And I started going to meetings. I started learning to turn my life over to my higher power, which I call God. But I'm very open with anyone's higher power because I've seen through the AA program that no matter what someone makes as their higher power, in many cases, they're protected and guided along the right path for them. And so I don't put down anybody else's conception of God. And for those of you who may be struggling a little bit with having too much to drink and wondering if maybe you could use a little AA program, you might just go pay one a visit because if you do have the problem, you're going to meet other people that share that issue. And it is a wonderful, wonderful experience. And sorry that I diverged there, but the reason I did is because I've done lots and lots of reading over the years. I started out at a holistic medical center. That's who I did the kids show for right out of college. So I'm always looking at holistic type medical treatments and that kind of thing. And I've done a lot of reading about people who have aholic type personalities, alcoholics, overeaters, gamblers, whatever. I don't happen to have a gambling problem, thank goodness. But basically people that tend to have these aholic type issues, I believe that they're born with low serotonin and low dopamine. And those are feel good chemicals that number one, help you feel happy in life. And number two, help you feel that you're part of the world, you're part of the group and you can feel okay. And I really believe that it all boils down to a different biochemistry that relates to sugar. I don't eat sugar or try not to and carbs because they turn right into sugar and alcohol because it turns into sugar. But basically people that have this biochemical disposition they just don't feel very good. And for them, alcohol or overeating or over anything is kind of a remedy for that because it pumps up the dopamine and the serotonin and helps them feel good and included in the group. Anyway, that was a long way of saying that I constantly fight feelings of being slightly unhappy, of seeing that glass as slightly half empty rather than half full. And it is wonderful because my husband is just the opposite. He is just born a happy guy. And you know, I think men are often happier than women as a general rule, as long as they have food, clothes, you know, shelter over their head and a few other things I won't mention, they're happy campers. But we women are more complicated. And at least in terms of me, sometimes I think I need a lot of different things to be happy. So anyway, that was a lot of rambling chit chat. But basically what it means is before I got to YouTube, I thought, well, I feel about 90% content now, but if I have a YouTube channel, I will be so happy. Well, I realized that happiness is an inside job and all of this, while it is nice and I'm very appreciative, it doesn't bring on happiness necessarily. Okay, now let's get to the last question. What do you intend on doing on your YouTube channel in the future? Okay, I am really glad someone asked that because I've been doing a lot of thinking and praying and meditating about that for maybe the last month. And I really think my channel going forward is going to be in a slightly different format. Now, I will always do hair and makeup, but I have to admit that makeup is not going to be my major focus going forward. I'll do a little bit of makeup, but it's kind of funny that when I came to YouTube, I really wasn't that much of a makeup girl at all. In fact, before I came to YouTube, for about the past five to 10 years, I had five to seven makeup items and I rebought the same ones over and over again. I wore like a CoverGirl classic pink blush 
and I wore some eyeshadow duo that I'd had for years and I wore the same lipstick. Buying a lot of different kinds of makeup just really wasn't my thing. And when you get to YouTube, you look around at all the other YouTubers and everybody's doing makeup and you think, well, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I should be doing makeup. So I did a lot of those videos and they were fun. And I will do the occasional makeup video going forward for sure. But my real passion is skincare. And I think that's something valuable that I can share with you because I've always had an interest in good skincare. Even before I came to YouTube, I was starting to use Retin-A and I'd used retinols for years. And I have some new takes on skincare and firming our skin that I have never discussed with you before. And I've been doing something to my skin that I think is wonderful in terms of firming up our skin because many of you in the comment section say things like, how do you keep your jaw firm? How do you keep your cheek so firm? And I didn't really have a good answer for that, except I still use the new face. In fact, I have two of them and I use them Monday through Friday morning, but I really needed bigger guns than the new face. And I don't want to spoil this, but it has to do with the fact that I started working my body out and then I realized that I was really producing major changes in my body. And I thought maybe we can produce major changes in our face by doing the same sort of thing. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but in terms of skincare, I have some great facial skincare videos coming up and I have some great body skincare videos coming up because up until maybe a month ago, month and a half ago, I totally concentrated on my facial skin and really didn't pay much attention to my arms. And then I looked down and went, oh my land, I am getting brown spots. I am getting age spots on my arms. And I didn't want that. Also at my mother's 4th of July pool party that she had for the family, she is 84 years old, 22 years older than me. And she was getting very thin, crepey skin on her arms. She was starting to get bruises. And I noticed my dad had a Band-Aid on his arm. And I said, dad, what's the deal with a Band-Aid? And he said that he had bumped into something and that his skin had ripped. And at that point, I just thought, hey, I'm on YouTube and I can read the studies about making skin thicker and helping our skin as we age. And I can develop programs and share them with you as my 50 plus beauty family. And I really don't want any of us to get in our 80s and have skin that is kind of falling apart. If there's some way to improve upon that, I really want to help us all do that. And another thing, and this happened because as many of you may know who follow my channel, we have just been through the death, the passing of Alan's father, Don. And maybe most of you don't know that he passed because you saw earlier videos where I talked about him going into the hospital and then him going into hospice and you didn't know the final outcome, but he was only in hospice for two days and he did pass and we got to see him in hospice. We moved him to a hospice where we could actually go in as visitors and visit with him. And that was absolutely wonderful. But seeing what Don went through in the last 10 years of his life, I realized that I don't want any of us to have to go through that. And that really one of the main themes of my channel is let's all make our second half our best half. And when I think about that, especially as we get into the latter years in our second half, the most important thing we can do is work out and eat right and get healthy so we avoid some of those lifestyle diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, all of that stuff. I used to just think we all had to deal with that at a certain age and I would always meet someone older and count down the years and think to myself, how many good years do I have left? And then I started watching some videos and doing some research on a new field called longevity and I realized that I would really like to learn that information, do some experiments on myself and bring that information to all of you. Because all of us going forward, if we're 30, 40 or 50, we are going to hopefully get to ages 70, 80 and 90. And we want to make sure that when we get there, those years are as healthy and wonderful as possible. So in addition to doing makeup, hair care and skincare, I'm also going to be bringing some longevity videos to you because I think that is information that all of us can use. Well, I guess that's about all I had to share with you today. And again, I want to thank you so much for getting my channel to 100,000 subscribers. I couldn't be happier about that. And I really look forward to getting to know each of you a little better and hopefully all of us together making our second half our best half. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.